<laughs> you little monkey. Greetings, sociopaths. As always, I truly appreciate you stopping by here. All right, well, today we are going to be making a very cool t-shirt. My first. All right, today's pattern is a free pattern, and I will be linking that as well below. Now, I always recommend once you cut your pattern pieces out to go ahead and trace them on butcher paper. It's very cheap. You can find it at Lowe's. It's also known as contractor paper. It comes in big, big rolls, and it's good for lots of different uses, but mainly I use it for transferring patterns and then storing them. If you want to know how I store them, well, I'm going to link to that video at the end of this one. It's been very popular, and it's a quick, easy way for $3 to store all of your patterns flat and not have to fold or roll them. All right, let's get started. Now, you're going to cut to each of the front and the back piece. It's on the fold, so you fold your fabric and you cut accordingly. We've done this in other projects. And then there's a sleeve piece as well, and you do the same thing. Two of those cut on the fold. And what you end up with are these awesome pieces of Gorilla with glasses fabrics, or whatever fabric you choose. All right, now the neck piece, you use ribbing. Now you can buy ribbing on Amazon or in your big box store. I get mine, of course, from Fabricut, and you can contact Fabricut at dadsos.fabricut.com to get the best deal on fabric. But ribbing is just what it says. It's ribbed fabric, and it is super stretchy, but it maintains its stretch because of the ribs. Now, on the original pattern instructions, it recommends 11 to 11 and a half length for your ribbing. I'm going to 11 and a half because I'm gonna be using my serger for this project, and that's gonna eat up some of the fabric. It'll get us pretty close to 11 and a quarter by the time we're done. All right, so we're gonna fold this in half, and we're gonna move over to the serger. Okay, well, I'm gonna be using the silver thread for this project. Now, hopefully you don't see any of the thread in any of the seams. I would probably usually use black for this project, but it's right in the middle, and I'm hoping maybe you can see the thread on some of the pieces that I'm going to show you. So first, we fold our ribbing in half, and run that right through. All right, we're gonna just snip that off there. Now, you can do all of this with a regular sewing machine, but I'm going to be doing half of it on the serger and then half of it on the sewing machine, finishing up with a double needle, which I told you about a couple days ago on my quick tip. All right, so there we have it. There is our serge neck piece, and we just need to put that to the side for now. All right, now we have our back and our front. Now you can pin this, but it's a very, very, very small piece. And my serger on my Juki serger has a very tight foot. So once I put it together, it's gonna hold pretty good. Now I almost screwed this up. You need to put right sides together. All right, there we go. Talking to the camera and almost cost myself a project. Almost had a fail. So I'm gonna put the right sides of the shoulder together. I'm going to lift up my foot just a little bit. And it holds it there so tight. Something small like this on this shoulder, I don't even need to pin it. All right, and then we run it through. All right, snip that. And let's go ahead and grab our other shoulder and hold it together and then run it through. Now on a serger, you don't wanna run over your pins because it has a blade and it's cutting and that is bad news bears or monkeys as the case may be. But you can use wonder clips and if you ever want to know how to get the best deal on Wonder Clips, just go to dadshost.com slash wonderclips. There's a link right for you. But like I said, the shoulders 
are super duper easy. All right, now let's get out our pens and pin the neckline. Christian, I hear you yelling at the screen. You just told us not to use pins with sergers, to use wonder clips. Yes, normally I do use wonder clips and thanks for listening. But a neckline is stretchy and tricky business. So I like to use pins as we stretch it all around the hole. Just stay with me. All right, so we have our neckline. We're gonna fold it in. So it's about uh, half an, or an inch, an inch in uh, width there. And we have the seam that we sewed right down the middle. Okay, now we find the middle of our back piece and then we are just going to lay this like a so, and then take our pen and pin that in place, all right? Now, we need to find the middle of our neckline, so just kind of pull it out straight like that. Eh, there it is, there's the middle. And then we are going to pin that on the middle of the front of our shirt, okay? Now we find the other middle. Now that we've got the pins in there, oh, there it is. And we are going to pin that right to the shoulder, just like so. And then we find the other middle. And that seems about right. Look, there are a little more uh, technical ways of doing that. You can measure this exactly and find your middle and, well guys, if you just kind of pull on it, you'll find the middle. It's pretty, pretty simple. All right, we put our pin in through our fingers and then pop that in. All right, now you see we have four there. Now the neck is smaller than the hole in your shirt. So what we want to do is we want to keep pulling this taut, I hold it with those two fingers, and then put another pin in that middle, okay? Hold that taut, and then put another pin in that middle. And then I'm going to keep going around and doing this. You can do it as many times as you feel necessary to keep finding the middle of the middle of the middle until there's no middles left. I don't know what would happen then. You just have pins. Maybe it's like when they say if you fold a piece of paper 50 times, it would be bigger than the size of the sun. I don't know about the science behind that, but I've read it many times. <laughs> it's on the internet, it must be true, right? So you just keep pulling it and repinning it in the middle of the middle of the middle, and that will properly pin, oh, I almost caught a finger there. There we go. That'll properly pin your neckline. Okay, now we're gonna move to the serger, okay? Okay, now that we're back at the serger, you wanna lift up your foot and put your fabric underneath. You might have to remove a couple of your pins, but my foot keeps it nice and tight, so I remove two pins and I'm good to go. Now, as you are sewing, you just need to tug a little. Just tug just a little bit so that that neck fabric, that rib fabric, is stretching along with you, okay? Don't rush. When you get close to a pin, just pull it out. Give it a little bit of a tug. See, we're just tugging it just a little bit. A little too fast for comfort there. And that way we are stretched along with the t-shirt body, okay? All right, now what I'm gonna do when I get close, I'm just gonna kinda pull it over just a little bit and angle it. And hit that seam again, so it kinda doubles up on itself. All right, and look at that. There we have a nice ribbed neckline. How cool is that? Okay, now the key in a professional looking garment is to iron that seam. So you can click pause, grab your iron, warm it up, and press that neckline. All right, are you back? All right, let's pin this sleeve. All right, this is the sleeve that we cut on the fold, like so. You have your round end, and we are going to match it to the middle of our shoulder. Are you sensing a pattern with this pattern? 
Find the middle of the neckline. Find the middle of the shoulder. It's pretty, pretty simple. Can you believe that one of the easiest beginner projects is actually a t-shirt? Wow, making your own t-shirt is pretty beginner friendly. All right, once you find the middle, just go ahead and pin around. I like to go ahead and put a pin at the edge on my corner just to make sure I am finding the proper middle. Sometimes you might have not lined it up properly, so sometimes I will put a little pin right there in the corner and then make sure that, yep, yep, that's the middle of the sleeve. You might have cut it a little wonky. It'll be all right. Now, be aware that if you're using different types of fabric or knits from different makers or different runs, they might have a little bit different stretchiness to them. So just be aware. But when we run it through our machine, we don't want to pull it too much. We want to let the machine do the work as much as possible. All right, go ahead and pin the other sleeve and let's move over to the serger. All right, now there are people I have met online that do this by hand as well because they've made so many shirts, but I recommend definitely pinning or clipping. I went ahead and used pins because, hey, they're already out. All right, get it on your serger and then just do each shoulder, okay? All right, there we go. All right, we have what's shaping up to be a nice shirt. All right, now what we're gonna do is just fold it in on itself. Line up our sleeves just like this. We're going to surge down to here. Then we are going to turn and come down to the bottom of the shirt. Now, if you need to, you can pause at the middle and with your needles down, lift your foot up just a little and spin the shirt. But this is a small curve. You should be able to just spin it as you go. Let's see what kind of luck I have with it. Make sure you just line up your seams there. All right, now here's the part where you would spin. Now, I am not pinning this. I am holding it together because my machine is holding that flat. And honestly, these are nice, long, straight seams, but really, pin, 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 if you feel like you need to. pretty pretty good. I'm going to do the other side and then we'll be back and talk about how we're going to hem the sleeves and the bottom with a double needle on our sewing machine. Hey, we'll get right back to the episode in a second, but until then, my friend Rihanna is going to spin the free wheel of fabric from our friends at fabricup.com and you are going to win something. All right, Rihanna, give it a spin. All right. Somebody in Dad Sews land has won something from the epic, mysterious Dad Sews scrap pile. All you have to do to win is subscribe to youtube.com slash dad sews and like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash dad sews. All right, let's get back to the episode, all right? All right. All right, well, we are back and I have set up my Juki sewing machine. Now I have made one important change to the machine. I have added a double needle. Now, if you're freaking out thinking, I don't know what a double needle is, or I don't want to use a double needle, you don't have to. You can hem using a stretch stitch on your machine. A simple zigzag stitch will do, but a double needle will give you that professional double line finish that you get on t-shirts, and it will leave some stretch in your material. Now, all I did was I added another spool right here on the back of my machine. If you don't have something like that, you can have a dowel glued to your machine. You can set something up on your table. Sometimes you could just set the spool up with something sticking inside of it on your table and it'll spool just fine. Or use a cone thread, it'll work. All you do is run it the same way you do your other thread on your machine. You run them both the same way and you put one in one needle and one in the other. I'm telling you, it's not hard to do, it's super easy. And if you watched, our previous quick tip from a couple days ago, I showed you how to load your bobbin threader with stretch thread. So if you want to use stretch thread for this project, not use a zigzag stitch, use a double needle, use stretchy thread, you can do that. Just check out the quick tips. I'll be sure to link that video at the end of this video. All right, so you turn your t-shirt inside out, and then we're going to pick up our handy dandy sewing gauge. 
Now, hemming is the best use of a sewing gauge I have found. You just slide this little marker where you want it. I have it at half an inch, and then you stick it onto your garment, and then you fold it over right to that marker, and then you put the pin in place where it needs to be. Super easy, and you keep everything accurate as long as you cut your fabric straight. All right, so our t-shirt is inside out. I'm going to lay it on the machine kind of right side out, not turn the whole thing in right side out, but just kind of lay it up there just like so. Now I want to start on the side of my garment. That way I can backstitch and nobody can really like point out, ooh, that's where he backstitched. Because when you're using a double needle, it gets a little tricky with the backstitching. If you're not very careful, you can see where you did it. So I'm gonna lay my t-shirt right side up, drop my foot down, I'm gonna sew just a little bit, and then I'm gonna backstitch very carefully and slowly. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and sew. Now you can sew over your pins if you want. I don't really like doing that. Um, sometimes you can break a needle, sometimes you can break a pin, but honestly your machine should go right over them, but it's no worries, just go slow, be patient. Now, when your t-shirt gets to where you need to move it, just kind of flip it up, keep sewing. If everything is pinned in place, then you really don't have to worry about it. You can have a finger underneath to make sure you're hitting both of those layers of fabric. Isn't it cool? I've got that magnetic pin cushion. Just catches my pins no matter how hard or soft I throw them. It's kind of cool. All right, now we're getting a nice double stitch just like you do on a professional t-shirt. I'm going to finish this up and then we'll do some close-up picks and I'll finish the sleeves. All right, so I am done hemming the bottom of my t-shirt. It actually looks pretty, pretty good. It's going to look really good once I press it. Now, again, you turn your shirt inside out. Now the sleeves are a little tricky, okay? Again, you're going to want to take your sewing gauge. You're gonna to want to put it right where you want the fabric and go ahead and pin it in place. Okay, once you have everything pinned together, just kind of hold your sleeve like so with your fingers inside of it. Take it to your machine and put it under your foot, just like that. Now, when it's between two of the pins, drop your foot down. And as you can see, we're just gonna sew our top double stitch right on the outside of the sleeve, all right? The shirt is inside out, and we're just going to slowly sew everything together. I'm gonna pull out this pin now that my foot's down, and just slowly go around my foot, and be careful that I'm not getting anything sucked under the machine twice, okay? Be careful with your pins. If you've pressed it after you've pinned it, that will make things a little bit easier because you won't have to worry about things moving around too much. But we just slowly go around, we get to a pin, we pull it out, and we just kind of untwist our shirt here. Oh, one of my pins is falling out. Do you see how we're doing that? We're just slowly taking our fingers and going around the foot being very careful not to stretch it, but just slowly, methodically go with that little, little kid's sleeve around the foot of your machine. All right, I'm coming back up. Be careful now, you can accidentally catch the top with your needle and sew it together. You don't wanna do that. But I'm also trying to line up my stitching so that I can back stitch over top of it. All right, let's see. There we go, that is pretty, pretty cool. As you can see right there, I'll do some close up shots of it as well. And that's all you have to do to hem the sleeve. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this other one and then we'll show you the final garment on my son, Ali Mac. I think he's gonna love this.
you little monkey. All right, well, there's my first t-shirt. I think it turned out great. I used a serger and my regular sewing machine. I used stretch thread on my bobbin and I used a double needle on my machine. Now you don't have to use any of those tools. You can make a t-shirt on a standard basic sewing machine. Just remember to pin or clip your garment very well. Don't pull your fabric and stretch it as you sew. And don't forget to use a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch, which almost every new machine has. If you have any questions, contact me at dadsews.com or facebook.com slash dadsews. I really hope you share this with your friends. It's a great fun project that beginners definitely can do. Trust me, you start sewing all the time and you, like me, are going to turn into a sociopath. I'll see you on the next episode of Dad Sews. Hey, don't forget to click a thumbs up below and click subscribe. We always have awesome giveaways here at Dad Sews. Hey, maybe you'll want a sewing machine or your own sew, fail, repeat button. For a full tutorial, click right here. And for a funny sewing video, click right here. Don't worry, I'll wait. This production is brought to you by the Plaid Dad Blog Podcast Network. For more information, visit us at plaiddadblog.com.